you need possession. And folks, you're in for a treat today. Two of the top face-off winners in the NLL. On the left, Joe Nardella leads the Firewolves. On the right, Trevor Baptiste leading the wings, two of the very best in the game. Yeah, both of these teams relatively conservative on face-offs. Their coaches talk about both of these players' development as lacrosse players, not just as face-off men. So we saw Trevor Baptiste getting better every week on defense. Nardella with that game-winning goal, actually, that he scored against Sas Saskatchewan last week. And especially when the game gets tight, Mitch, you are leading the former Black Wolves regime to great success, a postseason appearance in each of his five seasons there. This is the battle of the afternoon, Nardella and Baptiste. We are underway, Wings and Firewolves from Wells Fargo Center. This initial clamp tells you everything you need to know. Every possession, Mitch Belisle, will be hard to come by. Yeah, both of these coaches will be the first to tell you it's not just about the two players at the dot, it's about the entire ball team. They're gonna count on through this long season to push their offense over the edge former New England regime in March of 2019, the 2019 season, they make a big trade, sending Rochester a, a first Black Wolves in 2017, but Glenn Clark joked with us, in Clarkie's last year as a player, he played here in Philadelphia, and uh, well, Clarkie said, first thing that comes to mind when he comes to Wells Fargo Center is the fan base, and his players, it's, it's rubbed off on them as, he was okay champion at Syracuse University, a champion still is, still in is Rochester. Okay, right? Still is okay. That's Halifax right. Thunderbirds. In Halifax, correct. Relocation, jammer still finished between Philadelphia and Georgia. And like you said, shoot it like you don't care. I mean, it depends on, on that situation. Devin Caney's on the floor and she has more on what happened last week. Yeah, this is an area we knew Albany was going to be dangerous and Paul Day was worried about. They, they made him pay twice now. So, you go back to the 2019-2020 NLL season, Andrew Q had 15 goals in 11 just before the stoppage was fourth in the National Lacrosse League in scoring. Man, what a pickup for Albany. It's looking good right now. Quells the enthusiasm in the building. Nardella and Baptiste get into it. That's a win after the initial draw. That's what we're talking about right there. Nardella, he is an absolute gamer. Generate some offense other places, whether that's special teams power play. Again, you can't force someone to take a penalty or transition. That is the one you can control. So that's a huge goal and a boost they're going to look to let their offense start to get into 11 in Buffalo with another impressive win. Georgia's now one and three, but the Bandits feel like the team to beat the East. Yeah, the band, I watched that game. The Bandits were looking every bit of the number one team in the NLL right now, and then the Seals. I mean, three games, three different goalies. What a story there, as they've been able to rally around each other and really turn it against for Andrew Q. So now four of Q's nine goals have come on the power play. He's one of the top power play scorers in the league. Here comes Baptiste. Full steam ahead. That's a big body at five. Corey Small, year 11 in the NLL, drafted out of U Albany by the Edmonton Rush in the first round. Did not score a goal against Georgia last week. His first season with the Wings, he spent five years in Edmonton, four years in Vancouver, two in Buffalo. That experience on this offense so swarm at one and three through the first seven weeks of the season. Yeah, they've been in every game, but haven't found ways to win. That, that sometimes takes time with a lot of new pieces on the defensive end. That's a huge game for them, though. If they can knock off Rochester, who's looking really strong, that would be a big win. Georgia's in the midst of four straight games on the road. They were Jacob Rue, his first goal of this one, did not score last week. Rue up to three on the season. Brings that attention to them giving the big cat an outside look, and he says, anything you can do, I can do better, right? Maybe, Mitch, that propels a run. Albany led at 1.3-0 in the later stages of the first quarter, then 4-1. to one. Philadelphia's a goal away from making this a very tightly contested game. It probably already is that it's 7-5. Yeah, I think that's the key. Like you said, the only run of the game happened in the first quarter, right? right? They had those three in a row, and from there, they matched blow for blow. And the key is, can the wings go on a run of their own? They have yet to put one together yet. Just a few minutes into the Wings collegiate program. 
and the meaning that program has had on the NCAA, then of course establishes himself as a pro. And Small has been so impactful on the power play, but proving 5v. If you can't see it yourself. On just what we thought he had, his moment of the day, breaking the net, Corey Small comes right back and scores another. sword there defensively knocking down those shots what a crisp pass by Andrew Q as well it has not been outside of his power play goal Q had plenty of chances to shoot the ball well another Albany product on the wings roster nine to eight this is massive we teased the importance of face-offs two of the very best in the sport Nardella Baptiste Nardella trying to just kill as much clock as possible with that one goal lead. And the Firewolves come up with it. 